Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at Bitcoin and the news over the last 24 hours. Obviously we've seen Bitcoin pump to 40k from a low of about 33,000, now currently sitting at 37,500. So there's a lot of volatility in the market at the moment. So let's cover some of the news headlines and decipher what is fact and what is opinion and what is it actually trying to do to us in the market. Are the whales trying to manipulate or is it just more around the businesses trying to get their control over the market? So let's start with the cryptocurrency market caps. Just after you've hit that like button and subscribe to the channel with the bell notification and all so you can be updated with the content. And it does go a long way to helping out the video and the channel reach a wider audience. So go ahead and do that. Hit the like button down there. So the market cap's at 1.48 trillion. Remember our 50%, our halfway point between our bullish and bearish sentiment for the market is at 1.33. So we have been tracking at the 50% for some time and it's good to see that we didn't break down entirely and we're now bounced just a little above that 50% zone. So Bitcoin's at 37.5K. We're up 8% in the 24 hours, 21.5% in the last seven days. This is all the USD values. And I have seen on Twitter, a lot of people are very excited about their altcoin portfolios are up, which is great. We're definitely getting the gains on the USD value after heavy losses. Some had gone down as much as around 70 to 80%. And of course, even more for smaller cap cryptocurrencies. So this is the really important point to note. We want to reduce our risk so that we can maintain our portfolios in the long term. We want to have more money there long term. That's the obvious thing here if we're investing. So we want to try to avoid some of the cryptos which are bleeding out against Bitcoin. Now, the easiest way I've found to do this on a quick scan of a daily check of the markets is to go to CoinGecko, drop this currency down here, and then select Instead of USD, select Bitcoin, which is what we have at the moment. So we want to check that our cryptos are outpacing Bitcoin. Otherwise, we can just buy Bitcoin and reduce our risks. I'm not talking about being a Bitcoin maxi or an Ethereum maxi or any other type of maxi zealot type person, but we want to reduce our risk exposure in the market and still get the upside gain. And usually in the first stage of the market, as we be begin to recover, not saying this is a recovery because we'll get to the charts in a moment to see where the recoveries are, the recovery points. But in the beginning, Bitcoin usually is king and takes the gains from everyone else. And that is what we have seen over the last 24 hours, over the last seven days. You can see that they're all red against Bitcoin. So top 20, basically down. And the ones that have come back a little more, this is a much stronger move because then it's increased in its USD value as well. But some of these have been crushed a lot further. For example, Cardano and ETH aren't down too far on their BTC value, about 25 to 30%, whereas stuff like Polygon and Chainlink are down a lot further from their all-time highs, some as far as 70%. And as you can see, most of this stuff is in the red with a couple of green cryptocurrencies here. Let's look at our fear and greed, which is at 26 today. So obviously not too fearful, not extreme fear, but not a sign for us to be buying any more crypto just yet. Our last purchase was on the 21st of July. And if we look at our average price now, today's value is around 37,500. That gives us about a 10.5% return on our average price, was, which was around $34,000. So these are all the purchase points. This is the amounts and our total Bitcoin that we own. So that's not a bad going considering the market was down and it was quite a scary time for a lot of people to be investing in Bitcoin. Now, contrary to belief, yes, I have been purchasing Bitcoin at these low prices. Doesn't mean that this is the bottom. So we have to be very cautious of the market conditions moving forward. Everyone was extremely excited yesterday. That's a little bit of a cause for concern, especially as it starts to hit the headlines. So we can see the headlines across uh, Crypto News, which is like a crypto news aggregator. Coinbase Bitcoin ETF approval, only a matter of time. What does that actually mean? We'll have a look at that in just a sec on this article here. Tether put. So this is crypto equivalent of credit default swap. So this is some more FUD onto Tether. And Amazon, after all of that fantastic news of the last couple of days, then it was false rumor. But I mean, this is cryptocurrency. That's why we have to be on alert to really know what is going on. That's why we follow the charts. So let's have a look at Amazon. Not yet. Amazon denies rumors on plans to accept Bitcoin. 
Basically, from this article, the Amazon spokesperson has said that the earlier reports of the company planning to accept Bitcoin and to investigate the issuance of its own token next year are false. This could then turn out to be true. So this is why we don't put so much emphasis on news pieces like this. Insane news for Bitcoin. I would probably steer away from that sort of thing and just focus on what the chart is telling us. And it looks like the chart was telling us there's more of an epic short squeeze, why the price of Bitcoin was surging. This was yesterday. And of course, this has been covered before. We could see this from yesterday, how quickly the market spiked and has since dropped from that point. So a short squeeze is essentially traders betting on the price going down. And so when it doesn't go down, they have to cover their position, which means they have to buy back. So the market shoots up uh, a lot quicker. And as you can see here on a short term chart, the market essentially just shot straight up and that wiped out people all the way up to 48 grand on Bitcoin futures. So that would be probably the main reason for the massive move up. Now, Bitcoin rally liquidates 1 billion worth of short crypto positions. So again, just huge positions getting destroyed on the way up. So what we want to see from the chart is a consolidation above our resistance levels, which the market did break through on strength. So we'll look at that in just a moment. So that's pretty much the pricing and the, the volume that got destroyed yesterday. So Coinbase Bitcoin ETF approval, only a matter of time. So we've seen some of the news, which was opinion and may have helped some people. Again, this is more opinion news from companies uh, trying to sway the public opinion their way, or at least trying to get what they can to make money in the industry. So if Coinbase gets a Bitcoin ETF, then they're going to make more money from the fees of an ETF. The same goes for uh, the likes of, as it says here, Fidelity. So an approval will also benefit Coinbase, which stands to make money from providing services to those companies. So if the SEC does approve that, they make more money. Why do you think these news pieces come out? Because it gets people bullish and hopefully that uh, brings more attention to their case to get an ETF. So this is still bullish for Bitcoin because um, obviously that I think will increase the price. So that's my opinion. But at the end of the day, it's trying to improve their position, their financial position. Does it change Bitcoin fundamentally? No, it doesn't. But it does change the use of Bitcoin. And so we have to wait to see how this plays out. And we don't have to get too excited from one piece of news. Moving on to the Tether news. So this was the FUD. Essentially, some in traders are suggesting after that Tether FUD from Tether basically having to show what they are holding in reserves compared to what they are producing for crypto stable coins. People are suggesting or at least trying to trade the fact that maybe Tether will take down the market. And that's why they're looking for products as in a put to bet on the market going down if this Tether FUD actually plays out. That's essentially what this is here. So the news is just t letting us know what people are looking for in terms of crypto products. Nothing more, nothing less. Over onto Shopify now supports NFT sales. So this is a little more positive for the crypto space. And of course, if the NFTs are being sold on Ethereum, then this is going to be massive, more use case for Ethereum. Large Ethereum addresses increase ETH accumulation. This is actual fact. ETH addresses holding between 10,000 and 1 million ETH now own a total of 60.5 million coins, which is over half of the Ethereum supply. So we come back up to ETH, supply here at 117 million, and that gives us uh, just over half is held by whale addresses. And on to Twitter, just looking at how we will play the altcoin space and cryptocurrency space. We've got Bitcoin. If we are starting to trade into other altcoins, then we need to look for pumps, take some of our gains and move back. I just thought I'd bring this up. This is from Secrets of Crypto on Twitter. Uh, check this out. It also just helps like a really clean, simple flow diagram. Should we get the pumps on Bitcoin, then you want to trade into some alts. Make sure we're taking profits because we just don't know whether the, uh, the Bitcoin price will continue to fall. And if that happens, then we happen to see the alts fall even further. We get a dump on alts, which shows up on the Bitcoin dominance, like we just saw over the last 24 hours. We definitely have a lot of volume coming in on the dominance, which means the altcoins are falling. And we've talked previously about a resistance level of around 50 to 53% coming up. That would be where I would see maybe an alt season play out. So I'm still waiting to see some more dominance play into Bitcoin, probably some more upside to Bitcoin. Altcoins will have a dollar increase 
So their dollar value will go up, but their, their BTC value may continue to fall. And we've seen that on the likes of Cardano, which uh, stick around on the channel because I'll do another video on that today. You can see Cardano was trying to hold up really well yesterday and then it just happened to continue to fall down, unfortunately. We've got some volume here, but overall, it's just a downtrend. Lower highs, lower highs, lower lows. And we're seeing that across the board, especially with the majors, which is why the dominance is going up. So let's protect ourselves. Okay, last thing I want to look at is the Bitcoin levels. These are the critical levels that Bitcoin needs to hold and then break through because we're not out of the woods just yet. We are needing to hold and consolidate above our major zone. So major is around the $36,000 level where this purple box is. You can see a lot of our 50% levels coming out at 35K and we have tops at 36K. So if we can consolidate above that, that's going to give us strength to move to the next stage, to so the next stepping stone, which is at around 42,000. And then the next stepping stone at 47,000. These are very critical levels. I would say they're even more important than moving averages because 50% points, as Gan has pointed out, are extremely important to the market. So let's keep watching those levels. 36K we are above right now, so that's a good sign so far. The way the day played out yesterday, not so good. High volume and a low close, which means it looks like the whales have been selling into the close. Uh, so the thing we can do here to get out of this mess is to consolidate above 36K then start to climb our way to 42k. The bear trend, the downtrend, isn't over just yet. Let's not get too excited and, and start to lose all of our gains so far. And let's just stay with patience and then continue to track the charts as we'll do with every other video. Also, don't forget, if you want to get your superannuation into cryptocurrencies and metals while the prices are down, make sure you go and check out New Brighton Capital. There's a link to this in the description down below. Book yourself your free 20-minute consultation to understand how you can transfer money from your super into a self-managed super fund. And if you use the referral code Pazino, you'll get $150 of free credit when you complete the SMSF application with New Brighton Capital. So that's my take on Bitcoin for today and of course the cryptocurrency market it's looking okay at the moment. We do want to see consolidation and then stepping stones out of the woods here. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, hit the all so you can see the updates as we progress. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for daily crypto updates and check out the Investor Accelerator special. Link to that is down below. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.